Hey folks, welcome back. We have this uh, 2002 Dodge Intrepid in here, and it's got the uh, issue where the uh, you know the AC is blowing cold and everything, but it's only blowing out of the defrost, um, no matter which uh, selection you put it on. Uh, long and short of it, it ended up being the um, the uh, mode door actuator, which is this is here, and this is the one one that we used uh, right here I call it a you know the a lot of people get these things inter interchange and you know it I tried even looking it up at O'Reilly's uh, calling it you know and they call it a blend or actuator to me a blend or actuator would be the one you know do hot and cold mode does your your actuator does your uh, you know defrost floor vents this that and the other uh, but anyways, they called it a blend door actuator, but they also said in parentheses down there, mode door actuator, but this is the one uh, that changes the modes from defrost and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just gonna show you where it lives and how you can get access to it, because it's really not that bad to change. And then um, what you need to do after uh, changing it out. Um, and so anyways, let's get a different camera view and we'll uh, show you where it lives. All right, so to gain access, um, and I kind of did things through both sides because it's literally just right back here behind the, the radio and whatnot. Um, but you're going to have this piece right here that's going to be in here uh, just exactly the way it is right here. So here on the passenger side, you'll pull out this, um, I don't know, I usually call them like Christmas tree fasteners, although this isn't really a Christmas tree fastener, but it's something of the like. Pull that down. Pull this out. This side has a little seven millimeter screw going through that hole, and then you'll pull it out. Um, pull it out, and then all you'll have left is this piece. There's two screws, uh, five millimeter head screws, one on each side, and then this thing will drop out. And I'll show you where it kind of goes. Okay, so there's actually the location of the blend door or the mode door actuator that we just replaced. Uh, this piece I was just talking about, you can see where it uh, goes in here. You can see those two screw holes there and stuff like that. So um, that is how that goes. There's three screws on the, uh, they're all five millimeter headed screws on the blend door actuator. And then um, I don't didn't unplug it from there. I just took it out over because right now we're right here in the uh, driver's side footwell here, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but you can get those two uh, screws out of out of there from this side to replace it, and then um, go through the other side. Okay, we're here in the uh, passenger side uh, footwell here, and it's going to be a little bit hard to get the camera in there, but there's the other side of it, um, and you can get this last um, screw right here. You can even also get this one. As a matter of fact, when I put it in, I put both of these two, so you can choose whichever one you want to get, and then there's the uh, plug, and it's got kind of a, you know kind of a tab or whatever but if you pull that thing out <coughs> it, it comes out about right here um, then you can look at the electrical connector and, and figure out how to get it to um, come out <laughs> at this point what you want to do is once you've got the old one off um, and you go ahead and you uh, what you need to do is disconnect the battery install your new mode door actuator get it plugged in and then reconnect the battery I would uh, put this you know where you'd like it to go in this case we're using AC so you know once you hook the battery up start the car it doesn't have to be started but I just usually like to start the car um, get the battery charged up a little bit and what it's gonna do is every time the battery is disconnected and you reconnect the battery all of those uh, actuator motors um, they cycle they go one 
way and then they go all the way the next way and they learn their positions and then um so basically when you start the car and if you're using this mode actuator one wherever it's left at which is most likely to defrost because that's kind of its default uh position there um you'll 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 hear it and it'll and feel it it'll go all the way down to the floor back to the defrost and then when it's done doing that calibration it should go back to the point of which you chose um, you'll also notice that if you're standing in front of these vents or you feel it or whatever that the uh, blend hot and cold does the same thing because it calibrates itself too back and forth when it does that um, and that's how they how they work um, one of the things I also did prior to replacing the uh, actuator motor was I removed it and then I went ahead and just turned manually the um, deal that it you know the motor would actually turn and made sure that all of the functions worked and worked pretty freely and that everything seemed like it worked great and now everything uh, when it's now that it's all calibrated itself um, we can use this uh, dial right here and choose uh, whatever we we want to have selected um, so let's go ahead and get uh, this stuff put back together and I'll show you how all that looks all right there's what that uh, particular piece looks like installed there's one of the screws that holds it and the other one there um, so now it's there like that um, I use a combination of uh, this set up here with a wobbly eight millimeter and then I also was able to get uh, this guy in here with an eight millimeter on one of the screws and then uh, so now what we got to do is take this piece here and slide it over that uh, square piece there it just slides in there and really snap in place or nothing like that and then over here um, the end of it right here we got a screw that we uh, put in here and it ended up being a seven millimeter head or a Phillips anyways stick that screw in there and that's where that goes all right so now the next piece just uh, does the same thing sticks right there and then uh, somewhere if I remember where it goes I'll have to look and see where it goes um, where this guy snaps into well I don't exactly remember where it went but it fits to go right here there's a hole right there and you just push this up in here and then push the tab in there that's got to be how it goes so um yeah i said i don't remember that exactly where that if that's where that went um but it looks good <laughs> sometimes i forget i just don't exactly remember where where things go so anyways fire this thing up okay so we're coming out of the vents so it's not calibrating now because it already did because we already had reconnected the battery I tested it before putting all this stuff uh, back in here but we got it out of the vents now so okay now we're not out of the vents now we're coming out of the floor which is nice go back to vent there we go defrost and there we go defrost and then uh, put it back to vent and there we are only other thing you test here is hot Oh, plenty warm. 
back to cool. There we are, back to cool. AC on, her AC click on. Now we're getting really cold. All right. <clears throat> um, if you do disconnect the uh, battery, obviously the battery is clear down in there. Um, but you just undo this uh, nut right here. I think it's a 15 millimeter. And I just pull this pull this deal off. It disconnects the uh, negative battery cable to the rest of the car where it's, you know, that way you can, when you, as soon as you put your new blend door in there, reconnect it there, go in and start the car, let it do its cycle, and then do your testing and whatnot. So, I don't know, hopefully this helped you out. Um, I don't see these cars that much, uh, hardly at all. It's been a long time since I've seen one. Um, like I said, this is an O2. Uh, it needs a wash, but it's uh, it's a very nice nice car, 111,000 miles or so on it, and uh, it's uh, you know almost considered almost a survivor, I guess. I mean, there's I said I don't see these much anymore. I see a fair amount of the uh, like Dodge Neons um, from this era, uh, but I don't see these things or the Chrysler 300M that much. So I don't know, maybe the engines weren't uh, as great or something like I don't know I don't know that much about them but um, this is actually a nice driving car and uh, it's got a lot of life left in it so anyways we got the uh, HVAC system all uh, operating as, as it's supposed to be and um, hopefully something in this uh, helped you out and thanks for watching